So, you want to learn how to pack these things? Let's go! What's up guys, so thank you so much for checking out this video. In this one I'm gonna show you how to pack a skydiving parachute or canopy is what we call them. A little quick disclaimer, this is not the only advice you should get. You definitely shouldn't watch uh, or learn from things on YouTube. Uh, I just have to say that, you know how it is. It's definitely better to have some hands-on experience. That being said, um, you can definitely learn some stuff from some of these videos. This is how I pack. Um, some of the things that I'm gonna be doing are going to be optional. Not all of them are gonna be required. And like I said, uh, get advice from the guy that you are learning from or at your drop zone, or if you just wanna learn some information, check out this video. All right, so I wanna show you the canopy that I'm gonna be packing today. It's going to be a Sabre 2 210, and um, I'm a little bit of a smaller guy, so five foot six. And um, what I see people doing a lot is thinking that if they downsize, it's gonna make packing easier because they're packing a smaller canopy. Um, that's not always the case, right? So um, if I've learned anything, it's, it's definitely more that packing is more about technique than it is about the amount of fabric that you have. And if you know how to manage the fabric that you have, it's gonna make packing a whole lot easier and a lot less frustrating. So make sure that you're focusing on the technique rather than the actual uh, size of the canopy that you're packing. All right, so a few tips off the top. Uh, one, practice this at home. Um, if you have access to a canopy or even just a rig or parachute system just in general, make sure that you're practicing at home because uh, you're not going to be in a rush. Uh, if you're at the drop zone trying to get on a load or, or trying to learn to pack and get on a load at the same time, you'll probably see the clock ticking down and um, you'll, you'll get frustrated that you're not where you wanna be with the packing and you're just, you're just gonna give up altogether, okay? So make sure that you're practicing at home so it's a much more calm, easy, relaxing environment and you're not in a rush. The second thing that it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a little bit more time to kinda analyze what you're doing um, and how to do things the best that, you, that, that works for you, right? There's so many different ways to pack a parachute and so if you can actually take some time and learn uh, what you're trying to accomplish and then also uh, just analyzing what you have to do without the added um, you know, rush of getting on a load, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna learn a lot more and uh, it'll be a lot more enjoyable process for you, okay? Third thing is going to be that you actually have AC. At a, at a drop zone where you're maybe packing outside, it's gonna be sweaty, it's gonna be hot, it's gonna be annoying, uh, grass is gonna be everywhere. Um, if you're at home, you know, it, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable for you to pack. So let's go ahead and pack this canopy and uh, get ready to get jumped, all right? So uh, one thing I wanna say is that um, preventing malfunctions doesn't happen um, just with packing. Uh, it's definitely gonna happen while you're in the landing area. If you're coming down from the last jump, um, don't drop your toggles. Um, make sure that if there's lines falling around you, make sure that you're not, you know, if, if you're in the middle of them, don't step over lines. If you're stepping over lines, that's probably going to cause a step through and something that you're going to have to deal with when you're packing. So make sure that you're, you're uh, managing your canopy from the moment that you hit the ground all the way to when you bring it into the hangar, okay? So, uh, all right, so um, a lot of what I see people do is they'll drop their, their gear and it'll kind of look like this, right? Um, I prefer to pack this the way that it's going to be jumped. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make sure that it is in a belly to earth orientation like we would be jumping it, okay? So we got it all nice there. I'm gonna take a packing weight, stick it in the back here. You don't always need a packing weight. People think that they uh, need, need a packing weight. It's a lot more of just balance forward and backwards. You don't necessarily need it. If it helps you in the beginning, that's totally fine. Go ahead and use it, but try and use it, uh, or try and learn how to pack without one, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do here, um, Make sure that you're stowing your toggles in the landing area. And if you don't know how to stow toggles, I'm gonna show you. So when you get down from a skydive, it's gonna look like this, right? Um, your toggles are gonna be out like that pop. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull it all the way back here to where this cat eye is below the ring, okay? Make sure that it's below the ring. And then we're gonna take this, put it right through here. Make sure that the brake line is on the inside and we're going to stow this toggle right in here. Again, making sure that the 
hog or that the cat eye is below the metal ring. Okay, so these have a pin lock, and so I'm just going to put the pin lock in here if I can get in there. Cool, just like that. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to put my foot right here and I'm going to fold this excess in half. You can stow these a ton of different ways, but this is just the way that I prefer to do it. Okay. So then we're just going to do that on both sides and um, you can stow the excess when you get into the packing area, but always make sure that you're stowing your toggles up here in the landing area. It's going to just save you a lot of headache. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a continuity check to make sure that there's no step throughs in it. If you haven't stepped through any lines or anything like that, you should be good to go. But either way, we're always going to do a continuity check. Okay. Um, one thing that I want to say, a lot of people will just start from right here and grab the, uh, they'll grab the risers like they know that they should and then walk it all the way up. This is, this works assuming that there's no twist in these risers. If there's a twist in the riser similar to this and you do a continuity check, you've built in a twist here and if I walk this all the way up to the line, that's going to transfer that twist all the way to the top of the canopy. So we, what we want to do to prevent that is make sure that we're doing a continuity check all the way from the, the, the risers or the bottom of the risers all the way to the top of the canopy. We're not starting here because twists can always happen right here. Okay. So let's make sure that there's no twists in here and what you can do is just fan them out just like this, making sure that there's no twists in them and then we can go and walk up our, our lines with the continuity check. Okay. So uh, pointer finger is going to grab the brake lines, your middle finger is going to grab the rears and your ring finger is going to grab the, um, the front risers and we're going to do the same thing on this as well. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk and kind of milk all the excess all the way to the top of the canopy here, pulling it apart. And then we're just going to give it a little bit of a shake right here, right? <clears throat> just like that. I'm going to throw it over both of my shoulders while maintaining the, the, finger, uh, the finger position that I have here with the line. So I'm just going to throw it up and over my shoulders like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the front risers. So I'm only going to have these two. And what this is doing is this is making sure that there's no lines in between the fronts and the rears. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is once I see that there's no, there's no twist or anything like that, then I'm going to drop my middle finger and that's going to drop the rear risers. Okay. So now what I do, what I have is I only have the brake lines in my fingers. Okay. So I'm just going to transfer those around there. <clears throat> And since I've already figured out that there's no twists in this section, what I need to do is I need to check if there's any twists between my brake lines and my rear risers. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk these brake lines above the slider. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to come up here and just grab the brake lines right here with my thumb here, my thumb here. And then I'm just going to make sure that there's no, there's no lines or anything running this way. Just, just so that there's no twists or anything like that. That's a little added check that I like to do. If you want to do that, great. If not, no worries. Cool. So now that I know uh, that uh, the lines are, it, we've done a continuity check and everything's in place. Now what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to throw it over one shoulder and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees with the nose facing this way. So right now the nose is facing this way. Nose is going to face this way right now. And what I'm going to do is just turn it 90 degrees just like that. Okay. I'm going to give it another little bit of a shake right there and then I'm going to choke up on it a little bit more right up here. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking for the label. Usually the label is on the side of the canopy, right? So I'm looking for this label right here and what we're going to do is this is a saber two, so it's a nine cell canopy, right? Most canopies are going to e either be nine or seven cell. This one I know is a nine cell, so I'm going to count out the nine cells. What I see a lot of people doing is uh, once they do the first one, they'll try and find the second one, but they'll pull it out like that. And what the, what is that doing to the, the cell that I already counted out? It's kind of pulling it back this way. So what, if you just keep going like this, it's kind of not really effective, right? So let's make sure that we're managing that the best way that we can. And how you're going to do that is pull it there and then follow this or find the second cell. And instead of pulling it out this way, what we're going to do is we're just going to pull it straight over and back. So that's cell two, cell three, cell four, cell five. And like I said, if you're pulling it out here, you see what I'm doing to cell five right here, right? So cell five, 
cell six, cell seven, cell eight, cell nine. Cool, and if you've done that, then all of the nose cells should be right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab all of them and I'm gonna put them between my legs, right? And the biggest thing that you wanna do is try and make sure that you go from here with the canopy being rotated 90 degrees this way, you wanna make sure that you can rotate the entire canopy backwards as well. So if you only rotate the nose like this, half of the canopy is still facing this way. So what I see a lot of people doing is kind of throwing it back like that, and pulling, it, pulling it back. Um, you can do that. It's a little bit annoying, but you can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch that off with my legs, and then I'm going to use my slider right here. <clears throat> to separate the left and the right of the canopy, okay? So you see how that's there? So what I'm gonna do, there's a channel here because the grommets are here and here and here and here, okay? So I know that this is right in the center of the canopy. So I'm just gonna push this open right here and expose the center of the canopy, okay? <clears throat> I'm gonna choke up on it a little bit more. Now here's where, um, the way that I would recommend is going to be a little bit different from the way that most people do. A lot of people will teach you to go from the front to the rear of the canopy. I like to go ahead and work the canopy from back to front. And you'll see why in a little bit, um, but I just, the, in my opinion, there's, there's a lot to deal with, a lot going on right here. And if you can work from the back to the front, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to figure out what you're looking at and understand um, what you need to accomplish, okay? So we're gonna work back to front. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the label first, just like we're cocooning, but not yet. So I have a label, right? Which is gonna be the very center of the rear of the canopy. So now we're gonna find the four brake lines that are on this canopy. So I'm just gonna go to my left and I'm gonna find the first one. So this is line one. And I'm gonna throw that fabric over there. Line two, line three, line four, like that, okay? So now, now that I have the four brake lines here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push outwards, okay? Push outwards and then let it drop. So I'm gonna throw a visual on the screen right now of how a canopy is built. And when the canopy is in flight, it's actually going to be at an angle, which means that the rear lines of the canopy, the D lines are going to be the longest. So when I have it thrown over my shoulder, my D lines are going to be the longest as well. So if you can see that, from the, re uh, the reason that I push it out right there. So if I push it out right there and let it drop, you can see that all of my D lines are going to be the same length. So they tend to just kind of fall together. If you push it out there and just let it drop, you can see that one, two, three, four, these are all of my D lines on this side, okay? Pretty easy to deal with. Um, the only thing that you really have to worry about, not really worry about, but be aware of is this is a D line as well, but this is attached to the stabilizer. And the stabilizer is going to be the very, very side of the canopy. You don't really need to worry about this for right now. As long as it's to the side and out of the way, you're good. Now, if it's all tangled up and such like that, it's going to be an issue. But otherwise, you're really just looking for the four inner lines, the D lines, the C lines, the B lines, and the A lines. Okay? So, push it out. And I'm going to bring it right back down there. And so, so look at my finger position here. Um, this, I'm, I'm not grabbing, right? I'm not grabbing here. Um, I'm not creating slack in here. I'm just sliding my, my fingers up and down the lines if I need to, okay? Um, so we're gonna do that in a little bit more, but the same thing is gonna happen with this. And I'm gonna use my thumb to go one, two, three, and four, okay? So I've got all the D lines, and again, those are the same length. That's how I know that those are all D lines. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring those up and I'm going to grab them with this, okay? So now, um, can you come over here and get from this area? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch hands and I'm gonna push this out again, just like what I did with the brake lines, okay? And so what you can see here is that since all of the four D lines are together, I'm actually pulling all of the fabric together. So we're gonna work lines, fabric, lines, fabric, lines, fabric, okay? And what that looks like is I have four D lines here and then I have four pieces of fabric here. And then I have, since I've pushed this out here, Look what, that hap look what that does. It ends up putting all of my C lines together right here. Super easy, it lines them up for me. I don't have to go look for them or search, you know, which, figure out which ones are going to be my C lines. I see a lot of people questioning like, oh, are these my C lines? Are these the D lines? Are they B lines? What are they, you know? 
So if you go ahead and just push the canopy outwards like that, make this fabric taut, the sea lines will line themselves up or the, or the lines that are next are going to line themselves up. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna keep my, my hands like this and I'm gonna push out even more and then right in the center between this line and this line, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four and I'm just gonna pinch it off right here. So when I pinch this off and I'm gonna hold my hand stationary here, when I drop this, you can see that those lines come right together, okay? Now, with my finger here, with my thumb here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab and hook those lines, one, two, three, four. There's four C lines that I've just had. And now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna bring that outwards while I maintain this pinch. And as soon as it's there, I'm just gonna let it go. So now it's there and I've got more top fabric to deal with right here. So fabric, so now that we've got the lines, we're gonna go fabric now. So one, two, three, and four sheets of fabric. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pinch it off again, and then I'm just gonna let it fall right over here. And as I let it fall, the lines are gonna line up with these four B lines right here. Cool. So then, again, uh, I'm gonna use my thumb, one, two, three, four, and just hook those lines. Same thing right there. With this one here, um, I don't need to push it out that far. All I gotta do is one, two, three, four, and then I can let this fall. Now, what I'm looking for here is, you see how my A lines are all together, my B lines are all together, my C lines are all together, and my D lines are together as, as well. But the main thing that I'm looking for here is this kind of wave pattern that we go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So, you can see from my A lines, there's a curve outwards, they come to my B lines. My B lines, then there's a curve outwards and it comes to my C lines. If you wanna get, yeah, all the way in here, that'd be good. And then from my C lines, there's just a curve that goes all the way to my D lines. And that's what we're looking for. We're really looking for that flake back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Those folds that kind of overlap on top of each other when we lay it down. Cool, so uh, yeah, it's pretty easy working back to front. Like I said, I know a lot of people teach working front to back and that's their method. If that works for them, if that works for you, no worries at all. But. Um, Definitely give this one a shot. If you're a beginner, I find this one a little bit easier to work, uh, work with. So we're gonna do the exact same thing on the right side of the canopy now. So I'm gonna find the label. I'm gonna go up and over and I'm gonna find the brake line. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna get my stabilizer out of the way. And like I said, I'm gonna push outwards and let it drop. And now you can see that all four of these lines fall right together. And guys, this is a 210 square foot canopy, so it's kind of one of the bigger canopies. Um, this doesn't have to be more difficult. You just have to be a little bit more familiar with it, okay? So the more that you familiarize yourself with it, the more you'll be, or the easier it'll get for you. So since these are all about the same length now, we're just gonna go ahead and hook with my thumb, and we're going to grab those lines and put them in the, uh, in the notch of my hand here, okay? Then all we gotta do is push outwards, We've got the four lines, and now we're gonna do four pieces of fabric. So one, two, three, and four, just like that. We're gonna pinch off right in the center. These aren't falling together as well. So what you can do is just use the side of your hand and kind of just make it fall together back there. So now I've maintained all of these lines in here, and once I come back down, I've got one, two, three, four, I'm gonna come around on the other side. So as I come back down, uh, you're gonna do one, two, three, four, and all you gotta do is hook these together right here, okay? So then we're gonna push out again, just like so, and then one, two, three, oh, where's my fourth one? So one, two, three, four, and then I can just push that down there. I don't need a pinch, you can use a bunch of different techniques, but like I said, as long as you're working lines, fabric, lines, fabric, lines, fabric, everything should line up kind of from the rear, okay? So then, uh, same thing here, I just went ahead and I hooked all four lines. We're gonna pull out again, and we're just gonna go one, two, three, <clears throat> and four. You can kind of just give it a little bit of a shake right there just to make sure that they all fall together. And again, I'm just gonna clean up those folds back and forth. Here you can see it probably a little bit better, but you just see from your A lines, you just have this wave going back and forth and back and forth of fabric between it, okay? Cool, so stabilizer, like I said, you don't really have to do too much with that. We'll work with that in a little bit. All right, so we got all of our flaking done, 
And we're ready to quarter the slider now. Now flaking isn't entirely necessary, but flaking will help you make sure that you don't have any line over. So if you're counting all of the lines that are there, if I count four lines each time, I know that they're all running to the center of the canopy. And the biggest thing that I wanna do with flaking is make sure that the lines are gonna be in the center of the canopy and the fabric is going to be on the outside, okay? So uh, flaking is more just a way to make sure that all of your lines are in the right place, cool? So. I've pinned my slider up here uh, against uh, between the lines and my shoulder. So we're just going to bring it back down there like this. And I can let go of my legs just a little bit. I'm going to choke up on it a little bit more. And we're going to want to do a quarter of the slider in the back, a quarter of the slider on the side, a quarter on the slider uh, slide uh, of this side, and then the quarter in the front. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just take the slider and push it out just a little bit. And this is part of the stabilizer that we were kind of working with um, earlier. But what I like to do is I like to tuck the stabilizer underneath the slider. And what this will do is make sure that the slider, once it comes out of the bag, the slider is gonna be the first thing that hits the air, okay? Because if the, if the air starts catching in here, there is a possibility the air can rush into here and get behind the slider, which will force the slider down, giving you a harder opening. So in my opinion, I just like to, uh, to do this, make sure that the stabilizer is on the bottom or tucked inside uh, or underneath the slider. And we're just gonna lay that there as a quarter, okay? Same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna push the slider grommets aside for a little bit. Make sure not to manage it too, too much or else you may start messing up the lines on the inside or your flake job. So this is the stabilizer, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tuck that inside there, and the slider is going to go over it so that the slider, like I said, is going to be the first thing that is coming in contact with the air, okay? So I've got uh, quarter, 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 and I'm just gonna tuck that over just a little bit. All right, cool. So now we're gonna come over here, and this is the part that I've been holding in my legs, right? So next thing we need to do is uh, make sure that the front quarter is good. So I'm just gonna take my fingers and run it in between uh, the two grommets here and run it all the way down until it stops and just pull out just a little bit. And so that will grab the slider and pull it out and quarter the front, okay? The next thing I do is a little bit optional, but these, uh, this stabilizer as well, um, these flaps will kind of just be right here. But what I like to do is go ahead and tuck those inside um, just right next to the slider. And like I said, this is something a little bit extra, but it just cleans up the pack job a little bit more. And it's just something that I like to do. Um, you can experiment with different techniques to uh, change your openings if you want. Um, some people like to go ahead and tuck this in a little bit. Some people just leave it straight out. Depends a lot on the type of canopy that you're using and its opening characteristics. So I'm just gonna tuck it in just a little bit like that. And now we're ready to cocoon the whole thing, okay? So I'm gonna choke up on it pretty good here. I'm gonna grab um, this part of the stabilizer and this part right here. And I'm just gonna pull them across each other and kind of wrap up the canopy. And as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of the air out here. Then I'm gonna go ahead down here and make sure that I can grab the label. So the label is what I'm looking for. On PD canopies, it'll be right in the center. On some canopies, it'll be off to the side, but you're looking for that center seam or the center of the tail. And so I'll hold the fabric here, bring it up. And here uh, I find that finger, um, finger position and hand position is gonna be very, very key. If you can come like from right over here. So I like to wrap it a little bit higher. It doesn't have to be right above the grommets. I like to go maybe three inches above the grommet and just kind of uh, pinch it off just right here. Okay. And so what we're gonna need to do is make sure that the cocoon or the tail can come all the way around the canopy. So we're gonna use our knee or inside of the leg and just pull it around. And what we're doing is just making sure that we don't pull any of the fabric with this. We're keeping the fabric in place there. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna walk my way down here and I'm gonna use my leg to pull it all the way around. Cool, just like that. Now, uh, again, hand position is gonna be key here. So pay attention to this. And I do all this over my left shoulder, right? If you wanna do the complete opposite, you're more than welcome to. This is just um, how I end up doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my left hand and I'm going to put it underneath the lines. 
in this way. This allows me to support the lines and the entire canopy with my wrist, but it also leaves my hands free to be able to pinch this off here. All right, so now that I have this over my left hand, I'm just going to walk this all the way down like this, making sure that these seams kind of line up for the most part. You see this seam and this seam line up pretty good. I'm just gonna walk it all the way down, give myself a little bit of excess to work with here. And again, I am supporting the lines and the canopy with my left wrist, holding this here so that it doesn't move anyway. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm, uh, I'm actually gonna use the side of my body as almost like a table or a platform to go ahead and, and make my first few folds on. A lot of people just make really, really small rolls, but what you can do is pinch it off here and then use your pinky and make, you know, maybe like a three inch fold. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press on my leg here and then fold the entire thing over again. So I'm just working the canopy up and over the fabric up and over and making folds until the point where rolls start to happen, okay? So now once I get that fairly tight enough, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my kneecaps and to save the progress that I've made there, I'm gonna go ahead and pinch it off in my kneecaps, right? So this is not gonna be moving and now I have this entire hand free to make even more, uh, even more rolls up here, okay? So uh, what I like to do is I, I've done the bottom I like to do the top next, and this is just personal preference for me. So I'm gonna start making these rolls pretty nice and tight here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pressure against the lines so that I can pinch that off there. And it's gonna maintain, you know, very, very nice and tight right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the middle. So I do the bottom and then the top and then the middle, okay? Well, I do the bottom and then the top, then the middle, and then what I'll do is once the middle is there, I'll give the bottom a few more rolls, just like that. Right, so I'm maintaining uh, the, the, the tight roll up here and I'm going on the center as well. So I've gotten a few, more, uh, a few more twists and that's basically wrapping the entire canopy in an even tighter ball and cocoon that will slow your openings down just a tad. Um, some people will argue different, but you know, whatever works for you. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab underhand now and I, the part that is pinched off in my legs, I'm gonna grab underhand and I'm gonna grab this like this and this is going to allow me to maintain the canopy with two hands just like this and it's not gonna be falling all over the place. The tighter the cocoon that you can make it, the easier that everything is gonna stay together. So you can see that I'm kind of holding that right there and all I have to do is make sure that the knee bag is out of the way and I'm gonna lay it down really nice and easy and then with my bottom hand, the D bag is underneath me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the D bag and pull it out right there. All right, cool. So now that we got the canopy on the ground, um, we're going to cock the pilot chute next. A lot of people will do the pilot chute the moment that they come in and walk on the, uh, or lay the canopy down on the packing mat. I would, I would, I would try and stay away from that, or at least make sure that you're cocking the pilot chute after you lay the canopy down. And the reason for that is when, when you cock the pilot chute, when you're coming in and laying the canopy down, when you pick the canopy off the ground, your D-bag is off the ground as well. And so gravity is working on that D-bag to kind of pull it back down and undo the work that you've done. So you can definitely do that. Just make sure that now that there is no, there's no gravity on the D-bag, that, uh, that you're cocking it at this point at least, okay? So either do both checks of it or cock, them, uh, cock the pilot chute at this, uh, at this point. So uh, cock, the pilot chute is already cocked right now, but we're gonna do it again. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk and kind of milk out the twists from it and I'm gonna get all of the twists all the way out. And then I'm gonna lay the canopy or the D-bag down right here and I'm gonna step on the inside of it and I'm gonna get all the twists out again. Cool, so now uh, with my foot in there and my hand on the hacky, we're just gonna go ahead and pull the excess out so that it goes ahead and catches air. Now, one thing that you really wanna look for here and a lot of people don't do this, they kinda just throw it up in the air and say, oh yeah, it's catching air, that's good. Um, 
If you can look in here, I know it's going to be very, very hard to see, but you're going to have a kill line, which is this right here, and you're also going to have the trim tape. What you're looking for here is to make sure that the trim tape is the thing that is taut, um, because if the kill line is taut, let's say that I shorten this here, the kill line is taut, this still can catch air. It's not as effective as if uh, the... Uh, it's not as effective as if the trim tape is taut. And the tr when the trim tape is taut, that's when the canopy or the, the pilot chute is functioning at its maximum efficiency. And at lower airspeeds, say that you have to get out of the plane in an emergency, you want the canopy or you want the pi pilot chute to be working at maximum efficiency if you're at a lower airspeed, okay? So just make sure that, uh, that the trim tape is a thing that is taut and that's gonna be um, the wider piece of fabric than the actual kill line there. And what you can do, if it's not, just go ahead in here, grab the kill line and just give it a little bit more of a tug, okay? So if you give it a little bit more of a tug, now there's gonna be excess in there and you can see that the trim tape is the thing that is taut here, okay? So we're gonna drop that on the ground now and now let's get this thing in the back. So we're gonna fix up our D-bag here. We're gonna get all the rubber bands um, kind of just ready for us. And we can do this at any, any point. I just like to do them now a little bit. Cool, so our bag's ready. It's kind of out on the floor, ready to go. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to come over here. So now what we're gonna do is make sure that uh, we're gonna form this entire kind of butterfly looking cocoon to make sure that it is the width of the deployment bag. Now, when the manufacturers um, designed these, they designed this as a cube, right? So it's got three dimensions, a height, a width, a depth, and a length. And they designed the, uh, the container to uh, the main tray of the container to be those exact dimensions as well. So essentially what we're doing is we're trying to fit uh, this cube into this cube, right? Um, but we're also trying to make this canopy into a cube that can fit into there as well, okay? So what we're gonna do is come over here and make sure that um, this is still nice and tight. And if you, if you kind of maintained it the entire way, this is still gonna be tight. So uh, we're gonna put our knees on either side of the label. You can put them on the grommets. I don't really like to put them on the grommets. I like to put them just a little bit higher. And what we're gonna do is we're going to maintain the tension of the lines and just make sure that we can push out all of the air to the top of the canopy, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push up, 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 up. And you can make this center seam kind of follow all the way up. And then we're going to make sure that the canopy is aligned. And then with our shoulders, we're gonna come forward and crush out all of the air there. Right, so you can do this. Newer canopies are definitely going to be much more difficult to pack. Um, this one is not terribly old, not terribly new either. Now, there's a few different ways to do this. Some people like to come up maybe like on a third about right here and then make a fold under. Um, you can do that, whatever works for you. But what I like to do is just kind of like take it about halfway or three quarters of the way up and just kind of like, you know, get it in there. And like I said, roughly we're getting it for, roughly we're getting it to the size of the deployment bag here, okay? so. All the while, I am maintaining pressure inwards and upwards, okay? We're never pulling down towards the can uh, down towards my knees. We're always pushing up away from us and to the center, okay? So that's gonna give us a nice long cylindrical shape. And what we can do now is once we have this, I'm gonna grab it here and go ahead and just come right here. The biggest thing you want to do is make sure that you're not messing up all of the grommets or anything like that. Just go ahead and lay down and kind of do the worm and push the air outwards with your body. If you just lay on it, it's going to probably mess up some stuff, okay? At this point, take a nap, dude, seriously. Um, you've probably gotten to this point and it's kind of annoying. Um, if you are at a drop zone, you're trying to make a load, you're probably gonna to want to take a nap too. So just take a little bit of breather. If you take a little bit of a breather and you can kind of tuck this underneath there, it's actually going to build in a little bit more of a temporary uh, form to the canopy and it's gonna be easier to, um, to
to get in the bag a little bit later. So you can kind of work, work it in here. And then once you have it in a good place, just kind of take a few breaths. If you want to take a minute, minute and a half or something, just relax. Let your body do most of the work. Okay. All right, cool. So uh, right after you have taken your nap or taken your little bit of a breather, um, you'd really be surprised how much just a little bit, maybe 30, 45 seconds to a minute will actually, uh, of a breather will actually just make things a little bit more refreshing for you, okay? So, um, like I said, we're gonna tuck everything kind of inside. Um, and now what we're gonna do is, so this top skin here and this top skin here wrap around, right? And so what we're gonna do is uh, they wrap all the way around and then they start going into the cocoon underneath, right? So what we're gonna do is the cocoon, um, we're gonna try and grab bro uh, both sides of the top skin and make an another cocoon almost like this. You can kind of see, and I'm grabbing this top skin and this top skin from underneath and you can see how that's squeezing this canopy together, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're going to try and chop the canopy in half to make our first S fold. So I'm gonna come maybe about right about here, I would say, and then just push that down there and then what we're gonna do is bring the canopy towards us, okay? So we're gonna make our first chop, bringing our canopy towards us. And you can kind of see what I mean there by um, grabbing this top skin and this top skin as well. So we're chopping the canopy in half here. And then what I'm gonna do is with the top of my hand, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna push it forward over this hand. So uh, this hand is just kind of maintaining the cocoon right now, but it's going to become a chop at the moment, just like this, where I push this downwards and I'm going to, with my overhand, just go ahead and make that S fold up and over. So now what you can see we got is we have our first S fold right here, okay? I think what a lot of people don't realize is that uh, packing, you can actually use your, use your legs and inner thighs a lot more than, than you would think. So go ahead and make sure that you're right here. Um, otherwise the canopy is gonna kind of come out a little bit. Uh, the key here is making kind of a really nice cocoon and that's gonna help you maintain the fabric very, very well, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of tuck all this in here. A lot of this really doesn't matter. The main thing is really that the that the canopy, or that the lines are in the center and the fabric's on the side and we've already taken care of the lines, right? So uh, pay attention to my hand position here um, on my right hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and go across the center line with this. And then um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is with my index or my, with my point at, pointer finger, I'm going to grab the top skin here, kind of just like what we did, and then with my pinky and my other few fingers, I'm just gonna kind of grab this entire thing. So we're gonna grab this S fold on top and then the top skin of these two sides together so that we can maintain this entire thing with one hand, okay? What we're gonna do with the other hand is kind of just make sure that nothing moves, okay? So right here, we're, we're really just maintaining and it's, nothing is kind of coming apart um, I, I think that this is a lot more where technique comes into play. And so the, the better the technique you have, um, rather than the bigger the hands or the smaller the canopy is gonna be helpful here. So make sure that you're focusing on technique. Like I said, if you're doing this at home, you have a lot more room and time to figure out what works best for you. And so make sure you take advantage of that, okay? So now that I've got all three parts of this being maintained, the top, the left, and the right, I'm basically just gonna rotate the entire thing back towards me, just like this. Gonna rotate it towards me, and then with this hand free, I'm gonna try and stick the grommets kind of as far as I can right there. It's not really a huge deal, <clears throat> but we wanna make sure that the deployment bag is nice and straight and ready to, um, all, all you have to do is just kind of roll the canopy back there, and then we're just gonna bag half of the canopy at, the, at a time, okay? A lot of people teach doing the first S fold down here first, and that's totally okay. In that method, you are trying to bag the entire canopy at one time, rather than what I'm showing you is we're going to bag half of the canopy at a time, and then uh, we're gonna do the second half once the first half is in the bag. So, um, what we're gonna do here is we're basically just going to bring this around here, and you can really see here that uh, bagging half of the canopy is going to make things a lot easier to get it in there. And 
we're bringing, and I'm sure that you've heard this plenty of times before, but we're bringing the deployment bag around the canopy. We're not pushing the canopy into the deployment bag. So it's all uh, kind of a little bit more um, your point of reference on that. So we've got half of the canopy bagged here and we're gonna try and you know just fill out the corners a little bit, make sure that everything's symmetrical. Like I said, we're trying to get this canopy into a cube shape so that this cube can fit into the cube of the container, okay? So um, as we're getting off of the canopy, just put your weight on it here with your hands and uh, maintain that good shape there. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is um, you see the grommets right over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow that grommet line with my hands and then I'm gonna go right to the center and we're gonna rotate the entire canopy 90 degrees vertically and then we're gonna chop it right in half, okay? So if you see this here, it's really not a huge, huge deal. Um, you can always make your cocoon a little bit tighter towards the top and that will keep this together. It doesn't really matter if, uh, obviously you wanna keep things nice and clean, but if you see you know, your grommets coming out a little bit, we can fix that in just a little bit. So right now we folded it back on itself. And now what we're gonna do is, you see where my left hand is going. We're just gonna kinda push it forward and then we're going to make another chop here and push this, slide it right down into there. And we're just going to kind of push things back in there. Now what you can do here is if you see your grommets kind of coming out and whatnot, you can just come back in here and close it up if you want to. This is not really gonna cause a huge issue. The only thing that I would point out and say here is I've seen a lot of people um, just push this all the way down into the canopy to the point where the lines are the only thing that you can see sticking out. So for example, if I push this all the way down into here and you see the lines coming out, when the canopy comes out of, out of the bag, it will come out at a very, very high speed. And what's gonna happen is these lines are running straight across this fabric. I don't understand why a lot of people will, will end up doing that. So I use kind of this cocoon as more of a protection, right? <clears throat> so we're just gonna put it right like that and make sure that we have the top of the cocoon right up at the top here rather than just lines, okay? So that, that'll prevent any lines from rubbing up against uh, the canopy as the canopy gets extracted from the deployment bag. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of work the canopy more and more and more and more and more over to where we get these two things together. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the rubber band I'm gonna stick it through there. Damn it. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, pretty much the worst time that that can happen, right? When you're actually packing. Um, it happens, right? So, um, and using your fingers to try and figure this out is going to be an absolute nightmare. So let's go ahead and use some good technique to actually get this out. Instead of using tools, um, you have a tool that's literally built in right here and it's literally, literally always with you. So all you gotta do is come over here and on the part where the rubber band kinda comes around, just kinda stick that in there. Go with your fingers on this side and this side and pull. Boom, just like that. Get rid of the old one. And then I always like to do it this way. Just route it around and you're good to go. Nice and easy, tools right there. Make sure that you're using that. Now what we're gonna do is, again, pull it back there and we're going to try and get that as far as we can. And now what we're gonna do is make our first little bite right here and um, play with your hand position here um, how you end up doing this. Uh, there's, a, there's tons of different ways to do it but um, you have to find the, work, the, the way that works most comfortable for you. Um, I put two fingers in there, grab this one with my thumb, and then I push around and around, double stowing all of my lines. This is about how big your bite should be. Just try and make sure that they're clean. Um, as long as you don't have them crazy long, you'll, you'll be okay. <clears throat> Now we're gonna do the same thing on this one. We're just gonna go ahead and try and bring the grommet as close to the rubber band as we can. And it's the weird thing is it's gonna work different for each hand, right? Um, this way I'm using one hand, this way I'm using a different hand. So uh, figure out what works best for you. 
and then go ahead and um, do that from now on. Cool, so like that, I'm gonna grab with my pointer finger, I'm gonna grab up and around there, just like so. Does that help? If you want to, you can come and look over my shoulder. That may help a little bit. And as I'm doing this, the bag is pretty much closed. It's not going to go anywhere. These two locking stoves are kind of holding things where they should be. So now what I can do is I can start shaping up the bag to try and make that cube, right? Um, a lot of it are gonna be in the ears, so I can punch in the ears just a little bit. And it's kind of looking like a nice little cube. You can kind of just shape up the bag a little bit. And there you go. Uh, one thing I wanna point out, make sure that you're not pulling the entire container towards you. That's definitely a way to put a lot more wear and tear on your rig than you would need to, all right? So again, over here, that one's gonna go really nice and easy. And we're gonna need a little bit more space here. So people have gotten really creative with these kind of ways. You can put it between your legs, you can pull it, you can do it all the way up there. Whatever you want, just figure out the way that works best for you. So I'm gonna come up and over around, just like that, and let it go. These should be nice and taut. If there's a bunch of excess and you're looking at like this, that's probably not the best way to do it. And go ahead. If you see any kind of excess like this line, for example, what you can do is go ahead and look which one is it? So if you pull on it a little bit, you can see that it's this line right here. So all you gotta do is pull a little bit more. And if it's a little bit longer than the rest, that's totally okay. Um, really, you, you don't want a line that's like, you know, all the way out there. But anything that is kind of similar like that is, is fairly reasonable. Cool. Then we're gonna come back on this side, do the exact same thing. Two fingers there. And we're going to make a nice bite there. And if you can see, I'm, I'm pulling tension on um, this line right here, just to keep some tension in between the two. And it looks like this line is a little bit weird. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull on it to figure out which one it is, and then I'm just gonna pull it back. And just to make the, make, make the line stows look a little bit nicer. I'm not the best at line stows. Um, I usually use a Fluid Wings semi stoless deployment bag. If you haven't seen those, definitely look into those. Those are really nice. And the biggest thing that you're going to want to do is really make sure that you're kind of milking the lines up this way. And now I see a little bit more excess that's coming. And that's totally okay. And then same thing over here. Just a double stow around there. Like I said, figure out the best way to do that for you in terms of hand position and um, start using that from now on. Just like that. And we got one more to do. And you can see that um, I've kind of maintained good equal length from side to side because these lines are about the same. Now, if I pulled on one side farther than the other, these lines are gonna look like this, and that's probably not what you want, right? Um, ideally, when the canopy comes out, you want equal sides pulling on the, on the deployment bag equally, right? So, and this one is actually a little bit further here this way, so that's why it's that way. Cool, so now we can get rid of our pack and weight. And we're basically putting this back in the bag the exact way that it came out. So make sure to always use both hands on it to make sure that it doesn't flip around or anything like that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maintain the line tension there and I'm just gonna lay it right across and over there. At this point, I'm gonna check my pilot chute again. Usually what I'll do is I'll come back to this side and I'll just pull it up and over and usually it'll catch air, just kind of like that. And then what I can do is a visual check again. I'm looking that that trim tape is the one that is taut and not the kill line, okay? So I'm gonna leave the, the canopy in the bag right there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work the risers. So I need a little bit more excess here. And we're gonna come back around and line up the risers. 
again from the very bottom of the three rings, right? So the bottom of the three rings, there's no twist in them. If there was a twist, it would kind of look like that. That's not what we're looking for. I want to make sure that we line the risers exactly as they're lined up on the, on the uh, three rings here all the way down to the bottom of the container. <clears throat> so we're going to open up this. This is kind of a magnetic one and we're going to want to go above the um, above the reserve risers and then all the way down the side underneath this flap right here. Um, usually they're yellow. What you're going to want to do is make sure that the yellow toggle is up against the reserve uh, container here or the reserve tray. So what we're going to do is we're just going to push that up against there and then we're going to close the flap right down there, maintaining pressure around the entire riser so that it doesn't move anywhere. And now what we're going to do is we want to close the reserve flap around the riser. And I think that the, it's this one that goes up on top, just like so. Um, if you have a Mirage or a wings container, these are going to be a little bit more critical. They will have the tuck tab that goes up and around. So this spot will, uh, this outer one will have a tuck tab that goes up and around this. Um, what you're going to want to do with um, pretty much all of them, it's a good habit to get into all of them, but what we're going to want to do is create tension from here to here just to make sure that this is nice and tight. When you get those tuck tabs and they go up and over, if there's not enough tension on them, um, there is a chance that they, as the rig gets older, they'll start to flap a little bit more and in free fall they can come out and that's kind of annoying. I've seen some toggle fires from that, not exactly, uh, not exactly pretty. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create tension on it, right? So I'm going to grab the entire line group here, both the front and the back, uh, or, or the fronts, the rears, and the brake lines. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tug on it, okay? So we're just going to tug on it and make sure that we kind of cinch down on that tuck tab or even just really anything that's there. So just give it a nice tug, making sure that this is, this is your anchor and you're tugging on it here. So we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. <clears throat> And again, we're going to make sure that there's no twists in it or anything like that. And these can get cleaned up just a little bit. So uh, we're going to go here and then we're going to just pinch it down right there. Go up and over on it, just like that. Cool. Close it up so everything's nice and closed, first of all. And now what we're going to do is we're going to anchor our hand here and pull on it just a little bit. And you can kind of see how much excess that came out from there, just uh, cinching it down. Okay. Cool. So on vectors, um, I like to go ahead and do this and then fold it up and use just this flap here as just kind of a holder. And now what we're going to do is place the canopy uh, deployment bag into the actual main tray. And like I said, this is designed as a cube. It has three dimensions. So it's length, width, height, and this is the exact same. So we're trying to fit the cube into the cube. And the biggest thing about fitting the cube into the cube is really trying to fill out the corners the best that we can. And so the corners that I'm talking about are really going to be this corner right here and this corner right here. And I'm going to show you a good way to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to put the canopy uh, deployment bag in the main tray at a 45 degree angle. So can you get a view from this side? So I'm going to kind of go up here a little bit. This amount of excess is okay. Basically, we're just going to want to route this in here. I probably could have done one more stow, but um, just to give us a little bit extra, that's okay. So we're just going to try and put this in here in kind of an orderly fashion. You can kind of see that I just kind of rolled it around there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to drop it in here at a 45 degree angle. So you can kind of see that the canopy, uh, the deployment bag is kind of facing up here at 45 degrees. And what we're doing with that is we're trying to pull the container main tray around the canopy here. And we're trying to get this bottom of the cube into this bottom of this cube right here. Okay. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're kind of settling it in there. And you'll get, you'll be surprised how nice and easy this makes your life. 
So just try and get those. It's still at 45, so they're not really in the corner yet, but wait what we're gonna do on the next step, okay? So to fill out this corner right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna place our hand here and then we're gonna pull on this entire reserve tray here and we're gonna pull upwards. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna move this entire thing up here and we're gonna kind of put those cubes together like this and then we're gonna fold it back down on each other. So if you can see that, we're picking that up and you can kind of see where the top of that is and now we're gonna just kind of roll it back this way and now it's gonna help us fill out those bottom corners as nice as possible. And this is gonna make your life a whole lot easier down the road once you start closing this. Because if you just put it in like this, um, you're closing a much larger dimension than is designed for. So we're trying to kind of compensate with strength for that rather than the actual technique of let's fit the cube inside of the cube, okay? So we're just gonna clean this up a little bit. And now we've kind of got the cube in cube here. So now what we can do is, let me get a pull up cord. All right, so I got my pull up cord here and we're, what we're gonna do is we're going to feed it through here first. And a lot of people can't remember the closing sequence of this. And I'm gonna tell you or show you a little bit of a trick to help you remember on whichever rig that you're using, okay? So the correct rule on closing the flaps in a certain order is make sure that you are paying attention to the manufacturer's manual, all that kind of stuff, whatever. Um, but here's a good trick um, that you can remember to figure it out. So it's always gonna be bottom top, right? So bottom top, that's what we're gonna always do. No matter if your um, closing loop is anchored here or if it's anchored at the bottom of the reserve tray, you're always gonna go bottom top. So bottom is gonna close first and then we're going to the top. And if you have a, and if you have a rig that has it on the bottom, this is actually really, really nice and easy because you can just use that leverage. Um, you see where I'm putting my hand, I'm just kind of pushing forward and I'm using this almost as a fulcrum to just kind of ratchet it down right there, okay? Um, the biggest thing that you need to understand with closing each flap is that you want to get as far uh, or make as, make as much progress with each flap as you can so the progress that you make on that flap will transfer to the next flap and it will make it easier, okay? So let's try and get this one as far as we can. That looks good. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna put pressure downwards here to hold that in place. Can you get on this side? So then um, if I'm holding that down, now what I'm gonna do with my knee um, oh, this is where the, the trick comes in to figure out which flap is next. Sorry, can you get behind me? So if you look right down the center of the rig, you'll see a lot of them have symmetrical designs. So this one has just a blue stripe that's kind of coming all the way down. You've got white on either side. So you can kind of tell the center line. So uh, what we're looking for is an offset of the grommet. So what you can see is that this grommet is offset to the, to the right side. Um, and, and usually that is going to be a good indicator. Again, pay attention to the manufacturer, how they recommend to close it, but usually this is gonna be a good identifier to uh, the, the flap that is coming next. So always go bottom top and then look for the offset of the top grommet. So if this one is offset to the right, that means that we're going to do the right flap first and then the left, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna try and get as much of the way as we can and save the progress. So now, can you get on this side? Yeah, sweet. So I've got a lot of this one. I've got a good amount of excess here. Now what I'm, I'm gonna do is use my knee, right? And I'm just gonna put my knee on top of there and now I can let go of this and nothing is gonna move, okay? With regards to the uh, routing of the bridle, again, pay attention to the manufacturer. But the manufacturer says, I know that the manufacturer of this rig, uh, UPT says to route it from the bottom right part of the uh, closing flap. Some of them are to the top right. This one's to the bottom right. So uh, if, again, like we saw the offset of the grommet, what we're gonna do is go ahead and do the right flap next. So I've got it through there and there's a little bit more of a technique to this one. Um, my knee is maintaining the progress that we've made on, uh, we've got some loop that's still sticking out there, right? So what we're gonna do is make sure that we pull 
tension on that. You can see that that's tension. That means that this one isn't going to move as much anymore. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the, the pull-up cord up and over. And you can see with this ratcheting mo uh, motion, I'm actually going to bring it around all of this stuff and it's going to close things very, very nicely. I'm maintaining as much tension on it as possible through the entire kind of ratchet process that we go up and over, okay? So now you can see that we've kind of saved all of that progress and we have even more and now I'm putting tension on it here and we're maintaining that progress there. So now what I'm gonna do when I'm getting ready for the next flat, I'm gonna stick my knee on here. Cool, and we're going to take it right there. And we're gonna make sure that these are even again. And now what we're gonna do is basically the exact same thing, okay? <clears throat> there is going to be a little, this one is going to be a little bit tighter, so I'll have to show you some other stuff there. But we're gonna to wanna to go in through here and again, maintain as much tension as you can on this to pull it up and around and kind of like a ratcheting mo motion up and around. You wanna try and get it as far up and around as possible. And we're also looking at this right here. We want this flap to completely come all the way around the canopy that we have here so that if we come all the way around there and we're just gonna kind of, yeah, just ratchet it down like that. Like I said, we're trying to wrap the flaps around the deployment bag. We're not trying to just shove everything in there. And this is where technique is gonna be a little bit more key, okay? So I've got it majority of the way there, but now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna sit down here, put my leg across this way, and then what I can do is just pull Pull. This is where a little bit strength, uh, a little bit more strength is going to be required there. So now what I'm going to do is going to take enough excess there, and I'm just going to right there. Cool. So now what I can do is pound away here. This is kind of a little bit of an older rig, so it's a little bit more flexible. That's nice, but yeah. So now what we need to do is get rid of our pull-up tool or pull-up cord. And so what we're gonna do, you don't, don't ever just yank it straight out. If you start yanking it straight out, you're gonna cause a lot of friction on your closing loop and that's just gonna pull it straight out. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do is this method. So it's on top right now. If we pull it out, it's like I said, causing friction on the bottom of the closing loop there. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to take this part and we're going to wrap it all the way around and underneath the closing loop here or the closing pin here. So what that's gonna do is we're just gonna lift it up a little bit and you'll hear a little bit of a pop, just like that. And now we've gone from the closing loop or, or the closing uh, pull-up cord on top of the pin to on bottom. So now when we pull it out, and we're always gonna wanna pull away because if we pull this way, it's probably gonna pull this outwards. So if we pull this way, we're actually grinding on the metal of this and in a way polishing it rather than putting tension on the closing loop itself, okay? So we've got it all the way out there. You can set it just a little bit more and then tuck this excess. Cool. Um, I've got color in the window here. That's good. That's another good indicator. Again, um, with the trim tape being taut, that's kind of one of the main that we're looking for. Cool, so let's make sure that we have all of the twists out of there. And there are a thousand different ways to fold these pilot chutes. But basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come here. We're gonna fold it in half. <clears throat> We're gonna fold it in half. We're gonna fold it in thirds. And this is, again, the way I do it, optional. If you wanna learn a different way, it's totally fine. Majority of the time, they will work. <laughs> I say majority. It'll, uh, it'll pretty much always work. Just make sure that it's cocked. So we folded it in half, then we folded it in thirds, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in half again, just like so. And now we've kinda got a nice little square. And if you could come over my shoulder here, so right here, this is where finger position is gonna help you uh, be very, very, uh, make it very, very easy. So I'm gonna put my pointer finger here, and then I'm gonna put my thumb all the way over here. So both of these fingers are actually gonna be here. And then all I'm gonna do is back and forth. And so with my middle finger, I'm gonna go over and hold it there. Then I'm gonna put tension here. 
move my thumb up one level and then up over here. It's the exact same way. And then sometimes it's not gonna line up perfectly, so you may just have to go ahead and do like a half right there. So um, I'm pushing down on it, maintaining pressure, and then we're gonna just fold it over there like this. And then we can roll it up just like a Chipotle burrito. We can roll up that side and this side as well. And the idea here is that you wanna make things as tight as possible because the tighter that you can get it, if it's loose, once you try and get it into there, um, it's gonna be going all over the place. But if you make it nice and tight and nice and clean, um, it's gonna go over there really nice and easy. A big mistake that I see a lot of people making is um, when they go to put this in the bottom of container or the BOC pouch, um, they'll lift it up here and put it on the three rings. Bad idea, guys. Um, it's gonna deform your rig. It's going to just make things really nasty. Um, so go ahead and just basically all you gotta do is take the lateral, flip it to the side. You're not putting any stress on any components that are right there. And then what you can do is if it's really tight, just go ahead and punch it down there and that's gonna make it a little bit easier while you're maintaining this. And so all you gotta do is take this here, right in there, and the tighter that you make it, the easier it's gonna go in or the easier that it's gonna go, go in there, okay? So now we have just a little bit more excess and I see people kind of stowing this beforehand but I like this a little bit more to work with while it's here. And so making this the last step seems like the most sense to me. And we're just gonna tuck that over and over. Make sure that everything is underneath there and that if you have a tuck tab on this, the tuck tab is going up and over the bridle here. That's kind of what makes it free fly friendly. Cool. So one last trick. If you have a vector or something that has a flap that has like this, I usually like to keep a pull up cord in there. So just go ahead and wrap it up like this. And then just like that, stick it in there. And now you don't have to worry about not losing a, uh, or you can pack basically anywhere you're at. So you go like that, stick it up and over, give it a good uh, gear check and it is ready to jump. So yeah, that's this rig is pretty much ready to go, ready to do a gear check on and jump. If you have any questions or any suggestions even, or even typical skydiver sarcastic comments, drop them below and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this, hope you learned something. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Thanks guys, have a good one.